Welcome back to New World Film. This time I have the Bell & Howell Auto Load Optronic Eye Super 8 camera. Before I talk about it, I want to thank all of the people that have subscribed to my channel. I just broke 100 subscribers. For me, that's a big deal, and I appreciate it. So let's get into it. Uh, this is a camera that I didn't really seek. Um, I found it on eBay for 20 bucks, and that's as much as I was looking to spend because I had some extra uh, cash on a prepaid card, preloaded card, and I was just trying to use up what I had left. And I found this, didn't know if it worked or not, but it looked okay, so I bought it. And I didn't really know much about this camera, but it's just about Bell & Howell's first Super 8 camera. Um, actually, it, it is Bell & Howell's first Super 8 camera. Uh, there were a couple different versions of this. One had a T-handle grip. This one has a fold-out grip. So it came out in 1965 alongside the new Super 8 cartridge. This camera runs on four AA batteries, which you can find right here. They power both the two motors inside the camera as well as the light meter. The light meter in Bell & Howell cameras, uh, movie cameras, Maybe, maybe even there's still cameras, I don't know. It's called the Optronic Eye. It's just, a, just their fancy word for light meter. This camera has some interesting features and I learned about these features by looking up ads for the camera uh, on Google and eBay. People selling ads out of magazines and newspapers and I found out that this camera has slow motion capabilities. It has uh, gold contacts used on the inside in the circuitry where, uh, where necessary. The iris, which I think is the uh, aperture mechanism, it, it has jewels like a watch. It has uh, a jeweled movement like a watch so that's kind of interesting it was it was meant to be a, a more premium Super 8 camera than what Kodak offered uh, at the time and uh, this camera cost hundred and twenty five dollars when it was new which is about eleven hundred dollars today let's get into the features of this camera well you've got the power switch on top which you set to run, which is on, and then LR for long run, which locks the trigger in the run position so you can go get in front of the camera. Um, you got your little top accessory mount here. You've got your zoom buttons. This camera has two motors, one for the zoom, the other for rolling the film. On this side of the camera you will find the diopter adjustment for the uh, viewfinder and you have the settings over here for your exposure. You have an automatic and if you turn this to there you start being able to adjust it manually. And then test while looking through the viewfinder will tell you if the batteries are good or not. If they're bad there will be a little sawtooth uh, thing that kind of gets in front of the lens when you're looking through. Otherwise, your batteries are fine. On the bottom of the camera, you have the fold-out handle, but on the bottom of that, you have a quarter 20 tripod socket. And then on the front, you've got your run button, your run trigger. So how do you set this thing from 18 frames per second to slow motion 37 frames per second. Doesn't seem to be any provision for doing that on the outside of the camera. Well, what you do is when you're filming, 
if you match the trigger a little bit, it'll run, and that is in 18 frames per second. But if you press harder, you go into slow motion. So on my first test roll of film that I put through this, which you'll see later, um, I filmed a little bit of it in slow motion by accident because I didn't know about that. I didn't know how to activate slow motion or that the camera even had slow motion. On the back of the camera, you've got your eyepiece, which has a little rubber cup and your uh, footage counter. Let's open up the camera and take a look inside. Look at that. Detailed instructions on how this camera works. So here it shows a little example of what that little jagged edge looks like. It tells you something's wrong, exposure's wrong, batteries are bad. Um, that'll pop into your, to your view. This is a dummy cartridge I'll stick in here just to show you. Yeah, that's in there. But it does have a built-in 85 filter that works hopefully how it's supposed to. Um, I do have test footage that I shot with this on 50D. Uh, so that's what you'll see and it seems that everything went okay with that. This camera has an f1.9 manual focus lens that goes from 11 to 35 millimeters uh, zoom. The zoom is done with the buttons on the top here. The zoom is accomplished with these buttons. But to focus it, you have to do that manually here by just turning the lens. And there's a little mark right down in here. It's kind of hard to see, but you. You just turn the lens and line it up. It focuses from three feet to infinity. And there's a little dot that clicks in when you get to that point. I don't know what that is. I think that might be hyperfocal distance. I don't know what it is. I don't have the manual, but I'm gonna try to demonstrate the sound of the camera when it's running in regular and slow motion. So this is regular, 18 frames per second. And then I'm going to go into slow motion, 37 frames per second. You can easily hear the difference there. Just a really high quality camera. I mean, it's, it's hefty. It weighs two pounds, 13 ounces. It seems to be primarily metal. And at the time it was pretty expensive, so. I'm sure it's uh, it was built pretty. Oh, I didn't demonstrate the zoom. Let me demonstrate the zoom. I'm holding the telephoto button. And when it gets to the end, it just stops moving, so I wouldn't keep zooming there. And then zooming back to wide angle. Uh, I don't know how much I would use the zoom. It's just on stuff this old. I know Bell and Howell is good stuff back then, but the gears, I don't know what the gears are made out of in there. They could be plastic, and if they are on cameras this old, often they are brittle and prone to breakage. So let's take a look at some footage I shot on this camera using Vision 3 50D.
The film was developed and scanned by the Film Photography Project, and the footage was taken at Stone Mountain State Park in North Carolina. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll be back with more.